In today's video, I'll be counting down my top 10 favorite PSP JRPGs because, well, I love the PSP. Now, if your PSP looks like mine where the battery exploded and doesn't work anymore, you'll be happy to know that some of these games have made their way onto other platforms or can be played on the Vita, whose batteries don't explode. In any event, if you love JRPGs and list videos, be sure to subscribe for more. And if there's anything about the PSP you should take away from this video, it should be this. PSP. It's like a nut you can play with outside. Kicking off this list, we have Hexes Force. Now, I'll be real with you. This isn't some mind-blowing game that's going to change your life, but it's a really solid JRPG worth your time. At the beginning of the game, you're given the option to play as one of two characters, Cecilia a cleric and Levant a knight. What's cool is that their stories are basically two different viewpoints of the same plot and will intertwine periodically throughout the game. For those that like getting a lot of value out of their games, this is nice as it gives you a good reason to replay Hexes Force, especially considering each playthrough only takes you about 15 to 20 hours. The highlight of Hexes Force, however, has to be its combat. It reminds me a lot of Final Fantasy X in that you can clearly see the turn order at all times, and each character feels like they have a specific role to play. Even though the dungeons are pretty bland, they're made more enjoyable because of the combat. Sadly, Hexes Force commands outrageous prices online, so unless you're Scrooge McDuck, I'd recommend going digital on this one. Now I'm sure a lot of you want me to turn in my JRPG card for putting Crisis Core this low, but allow me to explain. First, let's talk about the good stuff. When it comes to the Final Fantasy VII compilation, Crisis Core is probably the best thing we got from it. I mean, we didn't even get before Crisis in the West, Advent Children was just weird, and Dirge of Cerberus was... Uh, yeah, it was something. Crisis Core gave us a much needed backstory on Zack, arguably the most important character in all of Final Fantasy VII. We got to see his relationship with Aerith, his time in Soldier, and most importantly, his time with our favorite spiky-haired hero, Cloud. Unlike Final Fantasy VII, Crisis Core was an action RPG. The combat was pretty solid, if not a little bit clunky. What I really did not like was the slot machine system for limit breaks. I never really understood it, and it felt like the game was taking control away from me. I also felt like the game was held back by the fact that it was a handheld game. It was a prequel to one of the most beloved games of all time and we couldn't get a console version? Heck, it's been nearly 15 years and we still don't have a console port or HD remaster. Unless you count the upcoming mobile game Ever Crisis, which is remaking the entire Final Fantasy VII compilation. Yeah, this is what we wanted. Level 5 has made some incredible games over the years and easily its most underrated game is the fantastic strategy RPG John Dark. As you might assume from the title, the game is based on the early 2000s teen drama Jodam Arcadia. <laughs> Can you imagine if they actually made a JRPG about this? That would be, uh, that would be pretty legendary. It's actually based on the historical figure Joan of Arc. In this fictionalized take on the character, you'll fight back a growing demon horde from England and defend your homeland of France. This game is similar in a lot of ways to Fire Emblem. It's similar not only because it's a strategy RPG, but also because of its rock, paper, scissors-like mechanics in combat. Instead of a weapon triangle like in Fire Emblem, however, you have Sol, Luna, and Stella. Each character has their own strengths and weaknesses, and you'll need to use them wisely because the game is tough. I remember dying on one of the early levels several times. You'll really need to plot out your strategy and make use of Jean's abilities if you want to see this one to the end. Unfortunately, this never received a sequel or a port of any kind, so you'll actually have to bust out your PSP or Vita if you want to play this one. Over the years, the Kingdom Hearts franchise saw a lot of spin-off games, but one of the very best of these was Birth by Sleep. Admittedly, this is one of the dumbest titles for a video game I've ever seen, which is really saying something when one of the other games in the same franchise is a math problem. Dumb names aside, this prequel game provides a lot of essential story for those that are interested in Kingdom Hearts lore, making it feel more like a mainline entry instead of a spin-off. However, you don't play as Sora this time around. You play as three Keyblade wielders in training, Terra, Aqua, and Ventus. When the game begins, you have the option to choose one of the three characters to play as through the story. Each character has their own perspective on more or less the same plot. You'll need to finish all three campaigns if you want to see the true ending, or, you know, just look it up on YouTube. What really shines in Birth by Sleep is the combat, which is arguably the best in the series. You have more combat options and meters that fill up to dish out even more damage. The camera can be a little wonky in the PSP version, so definitely play the HD remaster if you're giving this one a try. For those of you who know how I feel about the Trails of Cold Steel series, you might be surprised to see Trails in the Sky on this list. Despite it being a much older game, I actually enjoyed it quite a bit. I think what really did it for me were the characters. Falcom does such a great job of endearing you to these main characters Estelle and Joshua. Through their bracer journey and just smaller moments, you'll come to really care about them. The combat system is also a really nice mix of classic turn-based and strategy RPG systems. Positioning is key so your moves can hit the right enemies or so you don't get hit by enemies. There's great depth to it that will keep you wanting to get in every fight. And even though a lot of people don't like the battle theme, I do. I don't really see what the problem is.
Now you could play the PSP version and have a great experience, but I would highly recommend the PC version. It looks better, runs better, and has a ton of extras to make your time with the game that much better. And for those that really don't like the battle theme, you can always mod it out with something else. Persona 4 and Persona 5 get all the attention, but this new style of Persona games all started with Persona 3. Admittedly, the game is a lot darker in tone. When you think about it, it's kind of amazing that a game where you can do this spawn a game like this. Only Atlas. The same core gameplay of dungeon crawling mixed with life sim aspects is all here, though not nearly as enjoyable as Persona 4 or 5 in my opinion. My main gripes are the dungeon's repetitive layouts and the stamina system. You can't dungeon crawl for too long, otherwise you get fatigued. A few new features added to this portable version is the ability to finally control your other party members manually and the addition of a female protagonist. This is a pretty welcome addition as Persona 4 and 5 don't have this same option. The one huge issue with the PSP version though is, well, you're a dot. Due to hardware limitations, Atlas had to strip out a lot of features to get it to run properly, including the ability to explore areas. This one setback aside, this is a great version of Persona 3 and probably the one I'd recommend if you've never played it before. Fingers crossed for a PC port. Oh, and did you know that Vincent from Catherine's in the game? Because he totally is, and that's pretty cool. One of the games I credit with helping me get back into gaming is Lunar Silver Star Harmony. This remake of the Sega Saturn and PS1 original is the perfect encapsulation of what a classic JRPG should be, mainly because it kind of started all the tropes the genre is known for today. You have your childhood friend who becomes a love interest, collecting MacGuffins, saving the world, and much more. Lunar just feels cozy. It's like curling up next to a fire on a cold winter night. In Lunar you play as Alex, a boy whose curiosity sets the stage for a globe-trotting adventure. I love how innocent the story starts out. It's just some friends wanting to explore a cave, but then it becomes so much more. I mean, really, who didn't grow up pretending to go on adventures like this, hoping it would somehow become real? Like any good JRPG, you'll build a party full of colorful characters, each of whom fulfills a specific role in combat. The combat system is a turn-based one that has other elements like spacing to keep in mind. Admittedly, it can get a little easy near the end of the game, but still manages to stay fun throughout. If you consider yourself a fan of old-school JRPGs, then Lunar Silver Star Harmony is one you absolutely have to check out. Unquestionably, one of the best games on the PSP is Tactics Ogre Let Us Cling Together. This remake included so many new features and quality of life updates, making it the premier way to experience this game. Some of these features included a revamped experience system, a crafting mechanic, and my personal favorite, the chariot system. The chariot system allowed you to rewind the battle up to 50 turns in case you made a big mistake. Considering how many troops you bring into combat and how long some of the fights could take, this is a godsend. Anyone that's ever played a strategy RPG before will know how frustrating it can be to spend an hour plus on a battle, only to lose and have to start all over. Seriously, it's pretty much the worst. As far as the story goes, the central plot centers around warring factions vying over control of the crown. However, at certain points of the game, you're given story choices that drastically affect how the plot plays out. I can remember when I played this game for the first time, I was hunting down a particular character that a friend of mine had in their party. If you love a good strategy RPG, then Tactics Ogre is a must play. I'm sure you all saw this one coming sooner or later, but it had to make the list. Simply put, Final Fantasy Tactics War of the Lions is one of my favorite games of all time, and arguably one of the best strategy RPGs of all time. You'll get sucked in with Rams' story and the political intrigue that follows, get addicted to the incredible depth of gameplay, and probably end up wanting to replay it with different characters and classes because it's that good. I think what I love most about the gameplay is how you can customize your team. You can mix and match abilities from all kinds of different classes to make the ultimate soldier, or you know, just wreck everyone with Orlando. What makes War of the Lions so special is just how many new things that's added to this version. We've got new classes like the Dark Knight, new characters making cameo appearances like Balthier, new levels, animated cutscenes, and tons more. Sadly, War of the Lions does have this annoying slowdown for certain attacks and abilities that stains an otherwise perfect game. I still can't believe this game is stranded on PSP. It truly deserves a PC port at the very least. Here's hoping Square will come to their senses and do the right thing. And my favorite PSP JRPG and my favorite PSP game is E7. Now I'm sure a lot of you are asking why isn't War of the Lions number one when you had it in your top 10 JRPGs video when E7 didn't even make that list? Good question. Honestly, it really came down to this. When I beat E7 for the first time, I immediately started up a new file and started playing again. That's just how much fun I had with it. This was the first entry in the series that introduced the character swapping battle system the series is now known for. At the time, there really weren't any other action RPGs that played like this, especially not on the PSP. Like any good Ease game, the highlight is the bosses. They all have super fun mechanics that make you want to replay them. The story is... whatever. It's typical JRPG fare where you go to the Sand Town, the Snow Town, and the Forest Town. Not a ton of creativity, but honestly it was kind of nice for keeping the environments fresh and different throughout the game. 
Thankfully, E7 has been ported to PC, so you now have another way to play this excellent game. Now, if you want even more PlayStation Top 10s, click into this playlist right here, where I share the 10 best JRPGs on every Sony home console. And if you enjoyed this video and want more, be sure to subscribe. It's free, so what have you got to lose? Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.